Hi everyone, good evening, uh, welcome to the stream. We are going to continue on to develop the, um, the GPO bypass. Um, on the end of the last stream, we uh, it, it wasn't well. It was working, so we uh, the the DLL injection is working. Um, but since Firefox uh, forks a bunch of uh, children uh, processes and exits, uh, and the main the process that we launch exits after that. Um, have a little bit of a problem because we now need to uh, inject the library to every single one of those processes. Um, I also noticed that uh, on uh, on my two previous streams the audio was uh, a little bit lower. I hope I fixed it now. Um, that was because I have a gaming headset and for some reason uh, the gaming headset boosts uh, but on hardware the sound so the sound that I was being uh, that I was hearing in the headset um, was a lot lower than the actual sound that was coming out that was being recorded by OBS uh, so I I did have to tweak the sound there a lot and also the microphone settings were uh, way too low so hopefully now uh, I did some tests and it seems to be okay, um, which uh, is pretty good. I also tweaked a little bit the the streaming options, uh, or uh, I mean the streaming encoder. I mean, and so uh, now it seems that um, my internet connection is able to cope with the upload rate. And we should have uh, a crispier uh, image on Twitch on the on the stream with better quality. That being said, um, let's dive into it. So One thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the problem and how uh, we might be able to solve it. So, let me see. We need to set set some breakpoints. Um, which is. the wait for single object gonna add a breakpoint there so I'm going to run until I mm, there's an exception occurring where is the exception Base. What is the stack? If you wanna travel, then go alone. Yeah, what's the point in us if I never know? Yeah, if you're gonna leave, I'ma let you go. Interesting. I'm tired of the pain. Okay, I think we need to do something. Because I did change the code a little bit. Um Not this VM, sorry. This one. I did change the code a little bit. I had added uh, error handling to it, so I might have might have worked something. So I made this um, created this uh, global variables with the the names. Let's try to run the executable without 
Read out the debugger to see what happens. Okay, nothing happened. So it's definitely uh, something wrong with the code. Let's see. So we create the process and we check. If it didn't work, then return minus one. We try to get the load library name, which is a Nancy string. Oh, and also change the compilation from uh, Unicode to from sorry from ANSI to Unicode. So you can see here um, the linker needs to have this flag, and then the compiler flags. Uh, I had to define uh, this one. Uh, I had also needs to change at least in. Um, uh, min GW, you have to change the entry point, the Windows application entry point to to this one instead of uh, Win Main, W Win Main. So it's the wide version or Unicode version. Um, now, this uh, might be this one the problem. This one, the problem. Let me check one thing. Um, let's define this as a as a char instead of a w char, t char, and. Because then we got the load library address, we allocate in the remote process memory, check. Yes, seems to be okay. If it's equal to null, then we terminate the process that we created and we return minus three. So this is basically the error code. And then write process memory. And then we create a thread. So let's try it. So replace this one. And if I double click, still nothing. So it's definitely, I changed something in the code that is making the, the application fail. So let's um, debug it, see what's going on here. I'm going to add breakpoints on create process, which is the first API that we actually call. Okay, so it successfully called that API. Or he's calling that API. Let me just double check that there aren't any Firefox processes running on the background. Everything seems okay. So I'm gonna run until it wants to return. And there's an, an exception. Why is that so? Ah, uh, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. No, I'm calling. Uh, okay, I'm calling the right version of the function. So why is it failing? Interesting. No, it shouldn't be that, right? Okay, let's restart. So we called create. And if we look at this, follow in this assembler, follow in this assembler. So we actually passing down the right string. And 
this is the create process thing so if we run yeah so it's failing on the create process which is interesting mm, let me see this didn't change maybe This is interesting. Maybe something related with me changing it to Unicode, maybe? Because I did test multiple times. So if I do this... Says. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to uh, basically enforce this to be the white string because when you do uh, the T, you basically leave um, leave. Uh, it's basically ANSI slash Unicode agnostic code. So it will, depending on the flags that you defined on the compilation, select either the one byte character or the two bytes character. So the ANSI or the Unicode, UTF-8 in this case. Uh, but if I do like this, then it should be always uh, Unicode. I'm sorry. So I'm going to stop the debugger. <laughs> Funny. Anyways. Um, so the breakpoint should still be the same. So let's just move on yeah the breakpoints are still the same I'm gonna follow into the disassembler so I'm gonna check I'm going to go to the return address and RDX points to our string so let's follow it in dump and you can see here is a white string so the first character which is the C is two bytes long then the second character, which is the column, ask me column, column, yeah, column, is um, two bytes long and ends. Uh, so if I do this, it still gives me an access violation. Might it be because I moved the variables out of the stack? It might be that it's that's the that's the reason why it's crashing. Because clearly it doesn't seem to be related with uh, me uh, having the the character le uh, width agnostic code or variable declaration because we are calling the create process wide string hmm. okay i'm going to do is move this into the stack which is quite weird to be honest but uh, hey instead of being global variables because they might need to be static if it's declared on the global scope but uh, that's what you get when you develop in C so let's just move here and 
let's put it here. Hopefully the breakpoints are still valid. No, still the same error. Why is it giving that error? This is really weird. If we look to the stack... That is extremely, extremely weird. It is compiling for Unicode, or at least the Unicode flag is defined, or the defined. So why is it failing? I am creating this the same way I was before. I didn't change this. Startup info. Well, let's see how much I can go back, how much I can undo on this on the code. <laughs> Hopefully, I can I can undo all the changes that I did and just test it uh, again. Because I did that off stream. Yeah, but cannot do that. Okay. Okay, so a little bit further. I went too much backwards in time. Okay, that's. I think this was this was the cause that was working that's uh, let me just say here oh damn it okay never mind oh, don't save I already had it saved okay to redo the changes again. Okay, let's remove, let's build again the ANSI version. And hopefully, 
I will have the problem. Nah, for real? Uh, there's something... Is it the antivirus kicking in? I don't think so, but... Still failing, so it doesn't seem to be the, the, the problem of the antivirus. I don't seem to be even able to. to launch the, the process. this code out which is really 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 weird This is new. Uh, let me just change here the order of the VMs or I'll, I'm going to be doing this a lot, a lot of times. Um, so... Why is it doing that? I'm calling create process the same way I was doing before. Executable. Does it need to be like this? Sorry. Does it need to be a constant? not by the order of the tabs, it's by the order that I launched the VM, so... Anyways... Okay, compile... And I'm going to... Replace... Still failing for some reason, I don't understand why... This is really weird. Really, really weird. Um, symbols, injector, creative process. A. So if I. Create process A. Follow in dump. So it's an ASCII. It's ASCII characters. So let's step through it and try to understand uh, why it is doing this. Then call screen process internal A. Oh 
edit as a string. Start. Oh, here it is. So it is. It didn't. Oh, okay, because I. Okay, fair enough. No. Firefox. Okay, my okay. I think I know what I did wrong. But now, but before it was giving a access violation. But now it doesn't seem to be the case. So create process A, which it does return. So when I do this. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, yeah. Okay. I know. I know what I did wrong. Yeah. If it equals to true, my bad. Okay. Let's then try this code. Um, and if I move this here small mistake so I was basically checking if the the function if the create process had failed then it would do this which is wrong it should be if the process if the create process succeeded then it does this so yeah sucks when you do this sort of basic logic mistakes um, there's no firefox running i think yeah there's one uh, just to be sure i don't remember if i did this i don't think so, so just to be sure Now it works. Okay, fair enough. I was doing something wrong. I was doing this wrong. So, but before that, let's try to make this work in Unicode. Uh, D Unicode, and then the linker flags. Unicode. Compatible with LPW string. So it's LPW string. So it should be okay. We are not gonna create. Um, let's do it like this. And let's 
the let's compile again. See if uh, the problem goes away. No. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm pretty sure we are getting again the access violation. Yeah, pretty sure that's the case. Sorry, double click the wrong area on the screen. So play, play. Play, play, play. Yeah. Exception access violation. It doesn't happen with the ANSI version, but it does happen with the Unicode version, which is really. Uh, really weird I haven't done anything different other than declaring the the strings as they should to be sure um, there is nothing weird going on with that macro in specific no still doesn't work to do this sorry wrong I'm going to have an if def unicode I'm going to have this entry point uh, because it has to have a different name else or else it will have the ANSI uh, entry point So if we have here the NC entry point, so this will be this P and this will be W, this will be like this, and the rest is okay. So now I'm gonna try to compile it as NC. This should work. Yeah, it worked. And now I'm going to compile it as Unicode without changing anything about the code. And it will fail when it shouldn't.
yep. So the NC version of the code works, but the Unicode version doesn't. So let's Google for something like that, some error similar to that. So create process. my fault then it's my fault it's apparently the name of the model this module mm -hmm. So now I understand why. Okay, so it's, <laughs> as they usually say, read the manual, right? Read the RTFM. Uh, so, uh, interesting. So it's um, so the NC version doesn't cause a problem, but uh, the Unicode does. Okay, so what this person was saying is to declare it as a char, as an array. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so if that is the case, what we are going to do is something like this, which is going to fail. text here what can I use like this at least that should work no no doesn't work right. ah sorry my bad uh, once again my bad it's an array, not an array of pointers, but an array, yeah, okay, so it works. So if I take away this, it should work as well, no? You are killing me! Yeah, okay, so it works. But this will be writable? Yeah, it should be writable. Because it's not a literal string. It's an array of characters that you can then modify as well. So it should be okay. Interesting, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, now it works. 
Okay, so we fixed this bug. Um, now I just need to... Read to everything. So what I'm going to do is I am only gonna consider Unicode uh, compilation. So I don't want to have these ones here. Come on. Okay, so is there anything I can add here? Defines. Maybe this way it should sort it out. How do I configure? Settings maybe? C slash C plus plus maybe? And defines C, C plus plus Edit settings No? which one it is using so I'm just gonna follow come on you're not co cooperating with me you are definitely not cooperating with me <laughs> it was working just just a, a second ago. It was just working fine. Now it's not working again. Amazing. Now it's working fine again. What the hell? Okay, anyways. Maybe I'll just... Uh, if I have to do it like this, then... Uh, I'll just do then I'll support both both cases of Unicode and uh, and C builds that's it executable that's the library um, now we want the kernel as well kernel 32 dll which is kernel 32.dll then I want and this can be a pointer because it's not gonna be these ones are not going to be modified I hope If we get any other um, violations, any other access violations, uh, 
um, then we change it. Otherwise, we'll just leave it as it is. And this is string. And here, is string as well. And here, this one is the function that we need, which is load library. Ah, interesting, because if I define this uh, Yeah, I also need to consider I also need to consider the um, Unicode when uh, because get procedure address is always an ANSI function. It doesn't receive um, it doesn't receive uh, Unicode um, characters for the function name. So if we are compiling for Unicode. is still a string but we want the load library to be load library w instead of load library a so like this but at least we learn how to support both Unicode builds and non-Unicode builds um, sorry this is loads library A because if this is an ANSI build or a Unicode build this string here will be a unicode so we want to call load library w but this will always be a p string it's always a an ANSI string because when you call get procedure address get proc address it always receives an ANSI string. Okay. That's looking good. So, uh, if different from true, then if we failed, then return minus one. Now we need to get the procedure. Let me say we want the kernel 32 name, and in here we want the load library name. Am I missing something? No, I don't think so. If load library address equals null, so if the function failed then we 
terminate process process info handle to the process I think this VM needs to be rebooted because the ID or the the VM or the the application itself Visual 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 Stu Studio Code Visual Studio Code is lagging a little bit. Uh, yeah, terminate process zero. So we are launching the process. We are trying to get the address of the function. If it fails, we terminate the process and exit. Then we are going to allocate the memory that we need. Now the touches are also not working very well. So, library path, process. Uh, this is a pain. Huh? Uh, old library name. I think it's because of this. understand why now the tabs aren't working properly probably because of all these if deaths and This is so annoying, why? <laughs> I have no patience for this. Okay, let's do it like this. If and def. If and def Unicode, then define Unicode and if and let's make this the first instruction okay oh, come on what's the problem This 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 is just me being uh, pedantic because I don't want the ID to pointing out an error that doesn't actually exist. Um, actually, before that, let's see if this has any effect. Okay, so the define entries here actually works. So I was so you can see here if not define Unicode then it works anyways. So the problem so why does it say this? 
to w char so do i really need to do this like char because it's it's gonna be a w char doesn't the macro work Oh my god, this thing is so pedantic. Let's... Uh, okay. Let's see if it compiles. No, it actually doesn't compile. Oh. Doesn't compile. MB string length. Potentially. compiling Unicode so it's always going to be like this and this goes away as well right so let's let's not try to support ANSI and Unicode let's just go with Unicode and that's it okay so my question is still Why doesn't this work? So if I do includes my bad. No. Doesn't uh, doesn't do anything. really matter. So it's really just him complaining that he cannot convert this string. But if I do this, it won't be able to convert either. Mm, let me see what they were doing here. Seems to work for them, apparently. The text macro seems to seems to be because in the compiler it works, but uh, apparently Visual Studio doesn't like it. Because for some reason, send sign short actually. So, well, I can ignore it. Anyways. just ignore it 
Okay, so continuing on. So if we fail, case I don't know how yeah, it was it was working because it was unicode I think anyways we can move on I'm just gonna kill Visual Studio and launch it again. See if it improves. So it failed to allocate remotely the memory. Then we do um, terminate process. We do this one. And we return minus 3 as the status code. Uh, then we need to write. Actually, we don't need this launch result because it's not used anywhere, so we can just do this like this. So, if we fail to create the process return minus one, we try to get the load library function address, and if we fail, terminate the process that we created and run return minus two. Then we try to allocate the memory on the process that we created. If it fails, then terminate the process and return minus 5. We try to write... The library path. Sorry, so this is not load library name, it's library. Okay, and if it fails, and if it fails equals false, then what we do next. Is release the memory allocated virtual free uh, process. I think I actually have it here somewhere. Yeah, it's this one. Release the memory allocated. We terminate the process. If we are terminating the process, we don't really care about the memory that was allocated, but uh, let's be polite and uh, not cause memory leaks, even though we are terminating the process. Then have the handle, create the remote thread, and we are going to create it on the load library address. using the allocated memory as a parameter then if, if remote thread equals null then 
we exit as well. But for that to happen, we have to free the memory. Once again, be polite. And then return minus five. Let's minus five. Otherwise, we wait for the remote thread. We then close the handle for the remote thread. We release the allocated memory. We resume the thread. We don't need this one because the library was already injected, so we don't need to wait for the main process. And hopefully, this will work if we fix all the errors. Isn't it uh, interesting? Might not be the name of the function. Windows Unicode string length. Length. looking for uh, let's call see the documentation see what is the most recommended Interesting because they have underscore Unicode as well. So let's come here. Not only define this one, define this one as well. And also in the compilation add that as well I don't think I need this for the for the library but it doesn't hurt I think So it's WCSLEN. So let's try again. That doesn't really matter work anyways. So let's replace the files. Yep. Now let's open the debugger. Double check that it's actually loading the library. If it didn't it would it would terminate Firefox. Firefox wouldn't launch but I just want to be sure that I didn't do any logical mistakes. So I want a breakpoint here. So, great process, great remote thread. And now if Firefox, where are you? 
Yes, it loaded the library. So that's all good. Perfect. Perfect, it loaded the library. Okay, so we seem to have a Unicode build of um, of the injector. I was just looking at to see if I see something that is working. I don't see anything wrong with it, so let's call it done. Um, I was just thinking if it was if I was compiling in 32 bits, you would be this would need to change as well uh, because this function here or the address returned by this would then be 32 bits and you would be launching a 64 bits and when you created the remote thread it would create a major crash it wouldn't work um, so I might as well just to be honest not support 32 bits at least not for now and I'm going to rename this one to just make file and that's it just focus more on our use case and uh, that's perfect okay so the library is loading now how can we <laughs> how can we actually do what we set out ourselves uh, how can we achieve what we define that we wanted to achieve this stream um, So what I'm going to do is again launch the debugger. Uh, I'm just going to recompile it again. Okay. Uh, replace the files in destination and then add here. I'm going to so my idea is we are going to inject uh, we're going to go through all the process we are going to inject um, the library and then just before um, fire before we resume the, the Firefox process attach the API monitor, just monitoring uh, create process A and create process W calls and see what Firefox does. Because we might just, what we might just do is that when we inject li the li load library into the main uh, Firefox process or the process that we are launching, hook the, those functions, the create process A and W. And once they are called, we call the original function with the create suspended um, flag on, so the process is launched, and we redo the whole thing of injecting the library uh, into that specific process as well. Which is a little bit... Um, is a bit tiresome. Um, it's not tiresome, it's just a little bit ackish. It's it's a little bit sad uh, that Firefox, just uh, the main process that you are launching, just forks away. Or just uh, forks and then uh, exits. Because if that was the main process, then it would be... Um, yeah. Anyways. It is what it is, so we just need to deal with it. Uh, so we want resume thread. We wanna toggle the breakpoint on that one. So 
So we are there. So I'm going to run this one. This is an awesome tool. API Monitor is a really, really, really good tool. Because what, and, and I'm going to show you the advantage if it, if, if it works. I'm going to show you the advantage of running with, uh, of using this instead of a debugger. Of in, instead of debugging each process that, um, that is launched. Because it does it automatically for us. No. No. No, this is only seriously? This is just com interfaces, I don't want com interfaces. Okay. Let's create, check these ones and these ones. And I think that is all. That is all. Uh, no, no, this one I don't think it's used. Perfect. So now I'm going to start monitoring the Firefox process. I'm going to run this. Interestingly enough, it didn't started monitoring all these child processes, but in any case, we can see here the function call. Interesting, the flags that it is using. It's very, very interesting. Though that child process is still. Of course, our library is no longer present. So this is a different process. But it does send the extended version of the startup info, so the CBs, so the bytes, the size of the structure is different from the one that we are using. Other than that, it does seem pretty standard. But what is interesting is this, create suspended, create Unicode environment. This is really interesting. Because it's not pass it's not like it's and this function occurred where and I'm display devices anyways I think what we're going to do is. Close this. <sighs> Let's see. I'm going to try and launch uh, Firefox um, 
from here from API monitor and see how it behaves. Where is it, Firefox? Yep, it detaches, it behaves the same way. It behaves the same way. Okay, fair enough. So it's at least we know um, which function it is calling. I'm really tempted. Um, is the name of this function which one is the <clears throat> it might be a undocumented structure so let's do create suspended create unicode environment just these two flags and then wait for single object Wait for single object process info and then down the of the process infinite I want to see if if I can make It exits anyways, even if we pass the create and it still exits. So yeah, not big of a deal. So this doesn't doesn't really matter. There must be something else going on. So let's just leave it as it is. Um And let's call here, let's create a function called um, initialize, initialize, and another function called finalize or something what like that or that's maybe set up and then clean up or start up Startup and then clean up and then now we need to hook the 
the create process uh, w function so that we can re-inject the DLL on, on every single instance that is created by Firefox. So the first thing I'm going to define is the hook function. So <clears throat> so if we go here So then go to the definition of the function. Which is this one. So you can define this like this. This is our, our basically create process w hook. Mm -hmm. This has a lot of parameters. Very long. Like this. So this is our is our function. Now I need to return something for this function. So let's do like this. Now I need to define type def This goes away. This stays the same. This can go away because it's a type def, so it doesn't need parameter names, it only needs the types. And this will be called. Process type. Uh, how do you define type def? I think I'm missing some uh, parentheses. I think function function and C type def for function pointers. So, how was it? Yep, so it's different. like this. Create process type, let's call it. And then this, yeah, perfect. So now, after we define the type, the type, Just to follow the same nomenclature as Windows. Create, create, process, W. So a pointer to create process, W. And we're going to call it original, create, 
process w. And what is going to happen is we call original create process w. with the rest of the things, the rest of the parameters. So let me explain a little bit more the code. So the idea is once the DLL is injected into memory, this function will be called. And the first thing it will, the, the first uh, branch that will be taken on the, the switch is this one. So when the DLL is loaded, Windows calls uh, the entry point of the DLL with uh, these flags for the reason. F uh, for this val the value of this variable FW FTW reason is the LL process attached as you can see here. So so since this is the is called once the library is uh, is for for you to set up things on the library for you to be able to set up things on the library. So we're gonna call this startup method. Then this startup method is going to create a hook into the original create process uh, w function which is going to call our own create process uh, w function which is the create process hook so but we want to have the power to call the original create process uh, w function so we defined um, a type basically this is defining a type a C, a C type which is basically a pointer to that function so that's why it has all the parameter types in the correct order so then we can declare a variable that will hold the address to the original create process w not the, the address for the hooked function, the hook function, which is this one, but for the original one. And if we call it like this, if you use it like this, the compiler will handle everything for you. You don't have to carry a, concern yourself with uh, stack, uh, how to pass the parameters and all these sort of things. The compiler will automatically do that for you. And that's why I, as well, I put, I, I keep the calling convention uh, explicitly defined here. Okay. Um, if we come here to the library, and then we try to compile, compile it. Let's try and fix the error. Too few arguments to create process W. Oh, yeah, sorry. My bad. Still an error. Find reference. Oh yeah, true. So the linker shall not have this. Still an error. Why? Why is it trying to compile as an executable? I don't understand.
Okay, let's not waste too much time. Oh, okay. We don't need any import. Yeah. Okay. So I just need. Um, it's not this. Is this? So it should work now. Yeah, now it works. Perfect. So the only thing missing is this. And is library dot dll. DLL. So now we should have a brand new version. Yep, perfect. Okay. Cool. So I think we I'm gonna end for now. Um, I haven't achieved uh, what I, I was planning to achieve tonight because of that uh, memory access error, uh, which is quite peculiar because it's, it's a different behavior between the ANSI and the Unicode uh, function for um, creating process processes was something that I wasn't expecting so um, was a learning experience which is quite interesting which was quite interesting actually so now we at least we already defined the um, the type def and the variable that we need in order to try to to implement the the hook to create process w we identify that function as being the one that we need to hook on the original firefox process in order to inject into the other firefox's ch uh, children processes and uh, yeah we'll um, try to do that uh, next Thank you uh, very much for watching and uh, talk to you soon. Bye bye.